Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on performing a modified Levine's test using Microsoft Excel. The Levine's test tests homogeneity of variances, which is one of the assumptions for conducting an ANOVA. And I have another video that explains the Levine's test in Excel, as well as one for SPSS. But I want to show you briefly how the Levine's test is set up before I get to the modified Levine's test. So we have here two groups, a control and a treatment group, and in each group we have 30 scores. So 30 scores for control, 30 scores for treatment. And we want to run an ANOVA eventually to see if there is a statistically significant difference between the control and treatment groups. But first we need to meet the assumptions of NOVA, one of which is that there is homogeneity of variances. So to test that, we would use Levine's test. So first we would calculate the mean for the control group. You can see that's done by average, and then I highlighted all the data in control and that's copied all the way down. We do the same thing for the treatment group. We calculate the treatment mean. So it's the average of B2 through B31, that range. Again, copied all the way down. So you can see the control mean, 50.7, and the treatment mean, 49.2. And over here, we calculate the absolute value of the difference between each score and the mean. So we have 0.7, 14.7, and so on for the differences in the control, and then 14.2, 13.2, and so on for the differences in the treatment. The function for absolute value in Excel is ABS, as you can see up here. So then to actually conduct the Levine's test, we would run ANOVA. Now to do that in Excel, you go to Data and Data Analysis Tools, and you'll get this dialog. Now if you don't have this item in your ribbon, in your data ribbon, you can't select this, go to File, Options, Add-ins, down here click Go, where it says Excel Add-ins, and just check off Analysis Tool Pack. As you can see, mine's already checked off. So we'll select Data Analysis. You want ANOVA Single Factor. Click OK. You can see I already have this populated. It's F1 all the way through G31. So it's all the absolute values of the differences between the scores and the mean. We have a label in the first row, so we make sure this is checked off here. And the output range we've set to I4, the cell here. Click OK. And you can see for a standard Levine's test, based on means, we have a significance of 0.009. So in this case, we would reject the null hypothesis and assume that we violated the assumption of homogeneity of variances. So going back to our original distribution, if you have a non-normal distribution, a standard Levine's test is not ideal to test homogeneity of variances. So on occasion, we use what's referred to as a modified Levine's test sometimes called a median-based Levine's test, and it's also referred to as a Brown-Forsyth test, which is a little confusing because in SPSS there is a Brown-Forsyth test as an alternative to ANOVA. It's one of the options you can select when you run a one-way ANOVA so that if you violate the homogeneity of variances assumption, meaning if you have a statistically significant 
Levine's test, then you could interpret the Brown Forsyth instead of the ANOVA. There's also a Brown Forsyth, which is referred to as the modified Levine's test, which is a Levine's test that uses the median instead of the mean. So that's the Brown Forsyth test that I'm referring to now, a test of homogeneity of variances that uses the median instead of the mean. So I'll show you how to configure that in Excel. So in this case, where I have control mean, I'm just going to change this to median so that my labels are correct. Similarly, for treatment mean, I'm going to change this to median. So from here, it's relatively easy to switch over to the median, where it says average. I'm going to type in median. That's the function in Excel. So you can see that change from 50.7 to 51. I'm going to autofill that all the way down. So now I have the control median as opposed to the control mean. Similarly, for the treatment median, I want to change from the mean to the median. Do it the same way. You can see it jumped from 49.2 to 51.5. I'm going to autofill that all the way down. So since these functions were already constructed, uh, they've updated, right? So it's still the absolute value of the difference between the score and, in this case, the median instead of the mean. So we would just move on to conduct an ANOVA in the same way. Let's go to data analysis, single factor. Our input range will be the same. It's still grouped by columns, still labels in the first row. We're not going to change the alpha, and we'll use the same output range. It's going to overwrite the current results we have here. It's going to warn us about that. Click OK. And you can see now we have a different result, approximately 0 0.013. So in this case, the result, our, our conclusion is the same. Our, our technical result is different. We have point, just about 0 0.013, so that's a different p-value. But the conclusion we draw is the same, which is we would reject the null hypothesis that the variances are homogeneous. So the assumption of homogeneity of variances is violated. In this case, it's violated with a standard Levine's test, and it's violated with a modified Levine's test. So you want to keep in mind that the modified Levine's test is more appropriate when you're working with data that is not normally distributed. It's not normally distributed. Use a median-based or modified Levine's test. If your data is normally distributed, of course, you could use a standard Levine's test. But the modified Levine's test is considered a good test even for normally distributed data. I hope you found this video on the modified Levine's test to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.